Hello and welcome everyone. The game I've got set up here is Downfall of the Third Reich by uh, Do It Games. Um, I've played it a couple of times now. I have to admit the rules are kind of hard to uh, wrap your head around. Not so much because they're difficult. They're actually not. Not at all. But the rule book just isn't very good. So, you know, it takes a lot of reading, rereading, um, looking up posts on Board Game Geek, printing out extra files, watching videos on YouTube and what have you. But in the end, I do think I have them down reasonably well. There, there are, of course, still a few uh, issues, you know, that will remain or things that you do overlook. But overall, I think I've got a pretty good idea of the game by now. And I actually like it very much. So what I'm going to do is, is a playthrough. But uh, before I do that, I will give you a, a brief overview of the rules. Um, if you, if you want a better overview of the rules, I would say watch the uh, Stuka Joe video on this game. It's really excellent, and it has helped me a lot as well to, to better comprehend the game. Because many of the videos are actually made by the designer, and um, I mean, it's a great effort. It's great that they um, took the trouble to actually do so, but it's it's really in broken English. And, well, I, d I believe the Stuka Joe video is better, even though the other ones certainly have their merit as well. So how does this game work? Um, well, first of all, um, the Germans win if they make it beyond turn 22, so they actually perform better than historically. The Allies win if the Germans are defeated before they were defeated historically, and I believe that this is a draw, uh, even though I'm not actually 100% sure about that, but um, that would be the historical outcome. So. It's not like uh, conquering Moscow or Stalingrad or Leningrad or a combination of those or, or, or Paris and London or what have you. Well, when you're the game is the Germans, you really have to destroy the Germans and the Germans have to hold out longer than they did historically to win this game. Um, later, I will uh, do a playthrough uh, turn by turn and then I will explain the rules uh, that, that um, are actually... Um, in play uh, because uh, surrender conditions are different for each country. Um, so how does this game work? Well basically you perform a number of actions and this is the uh, uh, the quick reference sheet that comes with the game. These are the options you have. First of all you can perform a supply action which basically uh, allows you to um, update the uh, number of supplies you have. For instance Germany starts the game with five supplies and then you get five more. It, it, it reads five units. Uh, it actually means five supply units, or rather five supply points. I remember the first time, uh, after reading it for the first time, I thought, what? If you increase supply, you get free army units? What? So that was very confusing, and, and that's one of the things. Uh, I'll do a review later on. Um, that was very confusing in the beginning, and, and, and there are many things like that. Uh, also in the living rules, it says, um, what is that? Well, that certain units, uh, I, I believe the, uh, yeah, that Russia can invade uh, Hungary and Romania um, until they go to war with the Axis. Well, they go to war with the Allies, they join the Axis. And, and there's lots of stuff like that, you know. it's In these cases, it's pretty obvious what is intended, but it's simply a very, very poor translation. And in this particular case, it means the exact opposite of uh, what is intended. Uh, anyway, so what I was saying, basically, uh, what you do is you, you, you perform a number of actions uh, per uh, nation. So you have the Axis, you have the Allies, and you have the USSR. And um, they start in limited war, and everybody goes to total war in 1942. And under certain conditions, for instance, Barbarossa uh, or the Soviets attacking the Germans, uh, one or more sides can go to total war earlier on, which basically increases their number of uh, actions. And um, it also has an effect on uh, which developments are available for um for being um, developed. Uh, so basically you perform this number of actions per side and um, and for instance the supply action as I already explained uh, raises your uh, available supply by five and you need that supply to actually move, attack, perform amphibious assaults, naval movement, um, 
strategic movement, well, basically those things. So if you want to do stuff with your army, you pay for it by supplies, but you need to have those supplies, which will cost you an action. So, so that's basically the engine of the game. Uh, you can also increase armor production, as it's called, as an action, which basically means that you uh, um, raise the armor track by, um, by how many was it? Uh, three armor yeah it says units again it's confusing but the are these are accumulated armor points as a rule book calls them so you raise them by three the allies start the game with two the germans and the soviets have zero um, you need those armor points to uh, be able to upgrade or build armor units uh, so that's why you do need them uh, you can build infantry without but not armor and armor obviously is much stronger and has the Blitzkrieg ability, um, which basically allows you to trace supply, which you normally wouldn't be able to supply, uh, and um, which you normally wouldn't be able to trace. And it also allows you to perform a, a blitz movement, which basically allows you to move through enemy units as long as you also have friendly units uh, in place there. Um, and you need, to you need to have a plus four on combat, but that, that, that's a detail. Uh, you can also buy air missions as um, as an action, and you get two additional air missions. The Germans start with four already, um, so that is probably not an action they are going to perform on their first turn, but it is an option. Um, in order to be able to do that, you need one of the development tiles, which is aviation. Um, the Allies have it too, and the Russians uh, start with it, but it still needs to be developed which means that you still need to spend an action on it. Any development usually costs uh, two development actions. Um, later on in the game, you can actually uh, perform a development action twice. And in 1944, it only costs one development action to, to build something, but normally it costs you two turns to do so. So this one is actually the aviation um, development, which normally would remain hidden, but in this case, as it's set up, it's, it's known to everyone that that's actually the one. And I see that I forgot, well, I didn't actually forget, um, the Allies already have the aviation development as well. Another one is submarine missions, only available to the Germans. Uh, they start with a couple of them as well. And buying them is an action. Actually, placing them is for free, as you can read here, no action required. What you do here, you place two in the Battle of the Atlantic, and that means that the uh, British, or later on the Allies, when America also joins the war, um, and also France, by the way, uh, from the beginning, have one fewer action than they normally would have. Now, the Allies start with uh, a meager two actions per turn. So if the Germans actually place uh, two submarines here, that number is reduced by one, meaning that they have only one action. So uh, that super, uh, severely hampers uh, them in their possibilities, as it should be, I suppose. Reinforcement action is something else you can do. Um, here you can see how many reinforcement points each uh, nation has with a couple of um, special rules attached to them, as you can see. Um, basically, a reinforcement action is you build um, an infantry unit uh, uh, in one of these spaces. This is a German, as an example. This is a supply source, uh, the uh, circle there. Um, that's where, well, there are more of them. The Germans have four of them. Um, that's where you can build new units. Um, each step costs uh, one uh, reinforcement action. Um, so the Germans have four. So um, yeah, so you can figure out for yourself how many they would be able to build. Um, again, if you want to buy armor, that is also possible. It also costs uh, one reinforcement action uh, per um, per unit. Well, not the entire action. One reinforcement point per step. Uh, but in the case of armor, you also need to spend an armor point per step in order to be able to do so. Um, another one is developments. Well, I basically already explained that. Um, the Germans start with aviation and Blitzkrieg. Um, the Allies start with aviation and, as I said, the Russians also, but they still need to uh, spend one action on actually developing it and it gives you extra benefits in combat and they can also cancel one another out. Um, 
yeah, and 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 some of them you you cannot perform. Uh, some of them are really limited to a certain side. Uh, others you cannot do unless you have developed another one. Or um, yeah, so, so so that's how it works. For instance, amphibious invasions um, will allow the Allies to land up to three, and from nineteen nineteen forty four onwards, up to four units. Uh, where you can see these arrows, I believe the D's are restricted to. Um, to one unit. I'm not entirely sure. I would have to double check that when the time comes. Uh, so, so that 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 is a little bit about developments. And and what I really like about it, unlike in a game of Axis and Allies, for instance, in, in which it's really not mandatory and it's a bit of a gamble whether you will actually get it. Um, so many players actually choose to forego uh, investing in developments altogether. In this game. You really have to, because if you don't, then um, yeah, you, you're in the end. Your opponents will overwhelm you to such an extent that that you know you really won't be able to win. Um, and of course, you're also sure that as long as you um, perform the two actions it takes, you will actually get that development. So it's not a gamble in that sense. So that is something I really like. Uh, finally, the final action only the allied player can take is called lend -Lease, which basically uh, transfers one action, uh, one allied action to the Soviets. Of course, that is not something they will do in the beginning when they, when they only have two actions, and um, which might be down to one due to the Germans um, placing the submarines here, which uh, simulates the Battle of the Atlantic. Um, so, so those are all the actions. Um, While well, using supply is not an action, but as I said, it helps you. Um, well, it, it allows you to perform operations, moving, attacking, supporting amphibious landings, etc. Naval movement. Um, actually, using the accumulated armor doesn't cost anything. Using air missions is for free, but of course, you need to spend an action on actually accumulating them. And the same goes for placing the submarines. It doesn't cost an action either. Um, so that's uh, that's a little bit about the uh, general rules. Again, if you if you if you want to know more about it uh, and 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 see some more details, I really do suggest you um, you watch um, Stuka Joe's video, which does an excellent job of explaining the mechanics. Uh, do note that there have been a few rule updates since then. For instance, the fact that the Soviets can no longer attack uh, Hungary, Bulgaria, or Romania until they have actually uh, joined the Axis, which uh, happens in, I believe, winter 1941. Um, but other than that, it's a, it's a fantastic video, which will really help you understand the game. So the my next video is going to be um, the first uh, winter turn of 1940, and I will tell you something about the uh, special rules, and, and, and I will do, uh, well, a playthrough of um, that turn and show you what I did. So thank you for watching and hopefully see you on the next one.